Josephus, uh, over the last few weeks, has had escaped, so to speak, by the skin of his teeth mm -hmm. from a number of uh, plots against him, uh, put them down. He describes it as mercifully, but the enemy seems to have, on no occasions, lost their right hand. Um, and we might not have called that merciful today. On their own volition. Right. In one case, in the last case, he convinced the fellow, since you should lose both of your hands, uh, I will show you mercy, and you'll only lose one hand, but you will have to cut that hand off yourself. Oy. Which he does do, and so ends another rebellion, in this case, in Tiberius. But lest you think that he's solved the problem, we continue now. Um, and Josephus is going to tell us his successes in the Galilee, and you would think his successes in the Galilee would lead to tremendous support in Jerusalem because the Romans are coming from the north into uh, Israel, uh, and he's fortifying the, the north. Right? So he tells you this, and then he tells you where it goes from there. Now, there was one Joseph, the son of a female physician, who excited a great many young men to join him. He also insolently addressed, him, insolently addressed himself to the principal persons of Gamala and persuaded them to revolt from the king and take up arms and gave them hopes that they should, by this means, recover their liberty. Remember, the king at this point is Agrippus, who is really a stooge of the Romans, right? <laughs> so... Uh, revolting against Agrippus would be, in fact, revolting really against Roman power. Mm -hmm. um, Why is he men mentioning women physician, female physician? He's, ident he's identifying the person. That would be very right? unusual in those days, I would think. Maybe. Female. Or maybe, maybe not female for females. Yeah, maybe and she's caring for females. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, midwife. No, like, yeah. That's interesting. Could also be. Modesty, probably the mm. women, mm. the men didn't look after mm. women. No, Halacha allows you to. That's what they're thinking. In those days, the best doctor. You go to the best doctor. But anyway, it's a little unclear. It just identifies him that way. You know, I mean, part of the reason, part of it may be just to identify people, you know, uniquely, right? Because you'll see, he mentions Jesus. There are 29 different Jesuses mentioned in Josephus, <laughs> right? There, there was not such an uncommon name. Maybe uh, it's a negative. Does he describe this person negatively? Maybe it's a negative I don't, to... No, it doesn't seem to be. It just seems to be, mm -hmm. you know, so-and-so, the son of a carpenter. This is a unique way. You know, everybody knows... It's not the same one, that, it's a different one. ...that if there's a Joseph who is the son of a female physician, we know who that Joseph is, mm -hmm. because there weren't that many female physicians. Mm -hmm. Joseph is a very common name, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They also killed Chares, uh, and with him Jesus, one of the kinsmen, and a brother of Justice of Tiberius, as, they have or, as we have already said. Those of Gamala who wrote to me, desiring me to send them an armed force and workmen to raise the walls of their city, nor did I reject either of their requests. The, reg the region of Galantis, this is all in the Galilee, did also revolt from the king, as far as the village of Solimia. I also built a wall uh, about Seleucia and Sogani, which are villages naturally of great strength, meaning that they are physically defensible already, but he's building walls in addition. Moreover, I, like the manor, walled several villages of the Upper Galilee, through, though they were rocky of themselves. Their names are Jamnia, Merot, Achaber. I also fortified in the lower Galilee the cities of, and we learned about this earlier, Tereche, Tiberias, Sephorus, and the villages and the cave of Arbella, uh, Beershobe, Selamin, this is very important, Jotapata, uh, Kafareko, Sigo, Jaffa, uh, and Mount Tabor. Okay, so these villages are Jewish towns, or are they Roman yeah. or both? No, they're they're Jewish. And they're fortified. Some are mixed, uh, but they're why Jewish. Are they fortified against the Romans. So yeah, 
But, in um, principle, it doesn't a, make sense because the Romans are ruling the day. Why would they allow that? Well, well, no, but there is rebellion going on in the Galilee already. By who? Right, by the Jews. Okay. By the, the Jews, Jews right? killing Jews. The and Romans, Jews? I guess, right. the generals Jews. weren't necessarily. Um, <coughs> uh, they weren't, let's say, patrolling the Jewish cities. They were probably, as long as they paid their taxes. So far, there is not a major armed force mm -hmm. that could crash a rebellion, but it's on its way. Mm -hmm. It's marching towards the why, Galilee right now. Why are right? the Jews rebelling against Jews? No, they're rebelling against Roman power. Okay, but when they rebel the against the king, but they're rebelling against the Jews. said chop the guy's hand off who was rebelling. Oh, rebelling against him. There's a tremendous struggle, which oh. we haven't really talked about today, okay. going on between Josephus and his arch enemy, who is a zealot, uh, who he describes as corrupt and a robber. Oh. And we're about to hear more about him. All right. So the plot is about to thicken. There's multiple groups. A and he is, him. and he's stirring up trouble <coughs> whenever Josephus turns his back. Now this is all based on Josephus. Does Josephus right? report to the puppet uh, king of Israel? He actually reports to the leaders of Jerusalem, uh, not to the king. Okay, so he's right. lower down on the food chain. No. No. no, no, they really represent the national dream of the Jewish people, uh, okay. much more than the king so does. they're ignoring right? the, the puppet. They are, they are representatives of the people. The, you know, the, we're talking about the head of the Sanhedrin, the high priest, okay. things like that, right? And I'm glad you raised it because this is exactly what we're coming to now. And I think it will all become exists, it'll right? all yeah it still exists. It still exists. We'll, it, we'll, it'll all become very clear okay. uh, now, okay? I also laid up a quantity of grain in each of these places and arms as well for the security afterwards. He's anticipating battles that are going to happen. Right? <clears throat> it sounds like a very competent uh, general, you know, he's preparing everything. Right? But the hatred that John, the son of Levi, this is of Gagala, of Gaskala, uh, bore, bore to me, grew now more violent. While he could not bear my prosperity with patience, so he proposed to himself by all means possible to make away with me and built the walls of Geshala, which was the place of his birth. He then sent his brother uh, Simon to Jonathan, the son of Sisena, and about a hundred armed men to Yushalayim, to Shimon, the son of Gamliel, Shimon ben Gamliel, famous it's, in the Gemara. Uh, yeah, right? he's... Um, Colonel Godello, isn't he president he, of Israel at one time? Shimon was the, Shimon, he, he was the head of Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin, yeah. I believe. He's basically yeah. run everything. Right. I, uh, so he sent this group of distinguished individuals with a hundred armed men to meet with uh, Shimon ben Gamaliel in order to persuade him to induce the citizens of Jerusalem to take from me the government over the Galileans and to give them permission for conferring the authority upon him. Hmm. So he's really become the military governor of the Galilee at this point, right? And this the, <clears throat> this fellow John, who has hated him from the beginning, Gaskala, and I think suspects uh, that he is really um, uh, not a nationalist, that Josephus has leanings that are pro-Roman uh, because Josephus doesn't seem he seems to prepare for fights with the Romans but doesn't have any re rebellion or <laughs> fights with the Romans at all it's noticeable at this point right whereas John seems to be actively involved you know he's a zealot you know and he's 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 also not fighting the Romans either he's killing Jews who he sees as sympathetic to them right uh, so this is a struggle. This, of course, is a tremendous lesson for us, you know, today. That the, uh, you know, unlike, by the way, the last battle um, under Bar Kokhba, which happened uh, 65 years later, uh, what we see here is a Jewish world of tr tremendous division and tremendous hatred. You know, we talk at Tisha B'Av about Sinat Chinam. Hatred for no reason, right? And we tell this story, apocryphal story, of um, 
uh, bar bar kemsa and so bar kemsa and bar kemsa bar kemsa kemsa and bar kemsa and that they were invited to uh, a simcha and the guy was embarrassed mm -hmm. and because of this the temple is destroyed mm -hmm. what we're seeing here is really the essence and the, the not a, a simcha where somebody's embarrassed but really internal civil war that's going on in Israel uh, and it's going on in the face of Roman cohorts marching towards the Galilee, when people should be most unified, right? But is the Israel, so, is the Jewish civil war of this internal strife, is different opinions on what they feel the country should do? Like, why are they having it? Yes, you yeah, know, you, you missed part of this conversation, yeah, but, you know, right. there, there's a question that, uh, some central questions, right? One is, you know, can we exist under Roman occupation. A. B. What's the best deal we can make through negotiation? Right? C. Do we have to just go to war with them? Right? And if so, D. Do we have any chance of winning it? Or is it going to be even worse than if we're uh, living as subjects? Right? Uh, and we, you know, we can look back in history and come to some conclusions in this, but what is true is as long as you have A, B, C, and D and people all feel violently and strongly that their A, B, C, and D is correct, then E, the Romans, are going to win. That's a guarantee, right? And this should be a lesson for us today, by the way. Um, okay, so John has sent a hundred armed men to Jerusalem. That's already threatening, right? To send them to Jerusalem, right? Uh, a, to meet with Shimon ben Gamliel in order to persuade him to induce the citizens of Jerusalem to take from me, Josephus, the government of the Galileans and give their permission for conferring the authority upon him, the zealot, the leader of the zealots. Right? This Shimon was of the city of Yerushalayim and a very noble family of the sect of the Pharisees, which are supposed to excel in matters of accurate knowledge of the laws of their country. He was a man of great wisdom and reason and capable of restoring public affairs by his wisdom when they were in, in an ill posture. He was also an old friend and companion of John, the enemy of Josephus. Mm. But at that time, he had differences with me. When, therefore, he had received such exhortation, he persuaded the high priest, Ananus, and Jesus, the son of Gamala, G Gam Gamla, that others of the same rebellious faction to cut me down, and others of the same rebellious to cut me down, since I was growing so great, and not to overlook me, when I was exalting myself at the height of my glory. <laughs> so somebody can talk like this about themselves. <laughs> about themselves, right? He's, a little He's ready to quote himself any moment I'm now. Right? Out of my glory. <laughs> he, said, he said that it would be for the advantage of the Galileans if I was deprived of my government there. Nanus, the high priest, also said his friends asked him to make no delay about the matter, lest I should get the knowledge of what was happening too soon and should come to make an assault upon the city with a great army. Yeah. Now, to attack Jerusalem, he means? Yeah, yeah. Now, but who tells him about what happens? That's a very good <laughs> question. It's, it's, it's a very good question. So remember, one of the issues, that, the central issue, that we raised about Josephus at the very beginning of the conversation is, at the very beginning of the, the, the learning this, is who is Josephus? What is his background? Is he pro-Israel? Is he pro-Roman? Is he saying in order to survive we should make a deal with the Romans and his interests are really in the Jews? Uh, he's not rebellious uh, because he believes it's the safest thing. A rebellion against Rome will crush Jews forever, right? So, out of a care and protection for the Jews, he seems to be siding with the Romans. Right? Or is he some kind of double agent? <laughs> you know, working for both sides. Here we see 
that he is very, very comfortable with spying, right? Some he has in the center of his enemies' conversations with the highest authorities in Jerusalem a source, a source, right? Is Josephus at this time? He's rich. He's a rich. He's rich. Yeah, he is rich. He's he's done very well in the Galilee. Yeah, okay. You know, he's got ten so, percent so, of everything. So there. he's got right. guys that work for him. Yeah. Okay. We don't know what their motivations are, but he certainly knows the use of money. Yeah. We'll come to that. I'm glad you raised it very soon. Okay. So. Um, so he he oh he's told that this must be done very quickly. Right? Uh, because if not, I'm going to find out about it. Mm-hmm. This was the Council of Shimon, but Ananus the high priest demonstrated to them <coughs> this was not an easy thing to be done because many of the priests and, the, and uh, of the rulers of the people bore witness that I had acted like an excellent general. So there's a debate going on about his behavior, right? <laughs> no, but you don't have to understand. What he's saying is, at this moment... The great powers in Jerusalem are not clear as to who they're going to side with, John or me, right? Shimon ben Gamaliel is supporting John. He likes John. He doesn't seem to like me. doesn't explain the reason why, right? Ananus, who also seems to side with him, says, this is not going to be easy because there are a lot of people who are loyal to Josephus, right? And they're going to support him. So if you're going to do this, remember, this is not going to be an easy victory for for the forces of the zealots in this case, right? <clears throat> so he says, people bore witness that I'd acted like an excellent general and that it was the work of ill men to accuse one against whom they had nothing to say. Why isn't Josephus being allowed to defend himself, he's saying, right? Now, before he told us this whole story, remember the previous paragraph where he talks about what a great general he is. He's fortifying cities, he's building walls, he's storing up, you know, in case there's a siege, food and water and weapons, right? So he's acting like a very good general. And now he's saying, and people say that I'm a very good general. (laughs) When Shimon heard Anana say this, he desired that the messengers would conceal the thing and not let it be known among many, for that he would take care to have Josephus removed out of the Galilee very quickly. So he called for John's brother, Shimon, and charged him that they should send presents to Ananus and his friends, uh, for as he said, they might probably by that, by that means persuade him to change their minds. So and now Shimon is saying, I need a unified position of the leadership, the priesthood, then the Sanhedrin, right? And Ananus is being very coy. Right, because by the way, if Josephus wins, right, you know, I want to, you know, keep my hands. Right, <laughs> we know what he does when he wins. Right, mm-hmm. so Ananus is saying, yeah, you know, he's Shimon ben, yeah, he's he's saying Shimon ben Gamaliel, I understand your position; it has a lot of ta- validity, but <laughs> this is not may not be tactically a wise thing to do. Right, so now Shimon says. Send him a lot of gifts and money. <laughs> and maybe he'll he, change his mind. Joseph, right? To Joseph, to Joseph, so. No, to Ananus. Because Shimon ben Gamaliel wants unity in Jerusalem to remove Josephus. And Ananus is hedging. Uh-huh. Right? He's not saying, I'm all uh, with Shimon you. Shimon says to John, send, send the him gifts. present. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. To pay him. Right. Bribe him. That's right. Bribe. Pay right? Him. Yeah. <laughs> to remove Josephus from him. To have a unity of position to remove Josephus from governorship of the Galilee and replace him with John the Zealot. It, it, it's a way to make uh, all the priests have the same opinion. You got it? Well, the priesthood and the Sanhedrin yeah, yeah, are agreed, uh, yeah, right? Okay. All of a sudden, due to a few little bit of cash. Okay. <laughs> and indeed, Shimon did at length thus achieve what he had aimed for, and Ananus and those with him, being corrupted by bribes, uh, agreed to expel me out of the Galilee without making the rest of the citizens acquainted with what they were doing. <laughs> so it's a very small cabal, so to speak. Accordingly, they resolved to send men of distinction to their families and of distinction to their learning also. 
two of these were of the populace Jonathan and Ananias, by the sect of the Pharisees, while the third, Josar, was of the stock of the, of the priests, and a Pharisee also, and, and Simon, the last of them, was the youngest of the, of the, the priesthood, uh, of the line of the high priests. Uh, these were told that they were to come to the multitude of the Galileans and they should a- and should they ask them, what was the reason that they loved me, Josephus? And if they said that it was because I was born in, in Jerusalem, which is a, a distinction if you're a native of Jerusalem, that they should reply that they four were also born in Jerusalem. And if they should say, it was because I was well versed in halacha, in the law, they should reply that neither were they unacquainted with the practices of the country, that they're also masters of halacha. But if besides these, they should say that they loved me because I was a priest, they should reply that two of them were also priests. (laughs) So they've got the dialogue down, right? Now, when they had given Yonasan and his companions these instructions, they gave them 40,000 drachmas out of the public money. So now they're taking funds, probably from the temple, Mm -hmm. right? But when they heard that there was a certain Galilean that then was staying in Jerusalem, whose name was Jesus, who had about him a band of 600 armed men, they sent for him. And they gave him three months' pay, and gave him orders to follow Yonason and his companions and be obedient to them. And they also gave them money to three, they gave money to 300 men, they were citizens of Yushalayim, to maintain them all and ordered them also to follow the ambassadors, the shulchan. Mm-hmm. And when they had complied, they were gotten ready for the march. Yonathan and his companions went out with them, having along with them John's brother, and a hundred and a hundred armed men. So now we're actually up to a thousand, right? They came with a hundred, mm-hmm. right? They hired Jesus and his six hundred soldiers, right? Mm-hmm. And they also hired another three hundred. So it's a thousand armed men marching on uh, Jos- Josephus and ready to surprise him, <laughs> or not? He's expecting the charge that was given them by those that sent them was this: that if I would voluntarily lay down my arms they should send me alive to the city of Yerushalayim. But then in case I oppose them, they should kill me and fear nothing. Cool. For that, it was their command for them to do so. Right? There will be no retribution if you kill Josephus. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> they also wrote to John to make all ready for fighting me and gave orders to the inhabitants of Sephora and Gabara and Tiberias to send reinforcements to John. These were all areas that had previously rebelled, as you remember from mm-hmm. Josephus. Right? <clears throat> now, as my father wrote me an account of this, oh, his father? <laughs> so his yeah. father is remember, Josephus is from a priestly family too. For Jesus, the son of Gamala, uh, who was present at that council, a friend and companion of mine also told him of it, right? So he did have a source right in the middle, right? I was very they much... They didn't know that their father, his father is sitting somewhere. No, no, the Jesus of Gamala told his father, right? right? I was very much troubled as discovering thereby that my fellow citizens proved so ungrateful to me as out of envy to give order that I should be killed. My father earnestly pressed me also in his letter to come to him for, he, the, for that he longed to see his son before he died. He's an mm-hmm. o- old man, and he thinks I'll never see my son again. No, before who died? Before he died, the old man. Just, this is I not just Josephus. Josephus was much closer to dying than old than, man. Than old man. <laughs> I informed my friends of the... No, but the thing is that Josephus c- cannot easily go to Jerusalem. It's a trap for him to go to Jerusalem, mm-hmm. right? His father is saying, Be, I want to see you before I die. Mm-hmm. You know, it's Josephus' right. father. Yeah. His father lives where? In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, Jerusalem yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I informed my friends of these things and that in three days' time I should leave the country and go home. 
Upon hearing this, they were all very sorry. Leave which country and go Leave the Galilee and go home to Jerusalem. <clears throat> Upon hearing this, they were all very sorry, and they asked me with tears in their eyes not to leave them to be destroyed, for so they thought they should be. Now remember, they're actually, it's a serious conversation because if you're loyal to Josephus and this army from Jerusalem is marching on you, mm-hmm. either you have to prove that you're earnestly mm-hmm. rebelling against Josephus or you're going to be mm-hmm. in big trouble. Right? Um, with tears in their eyes, not to leave them to be destroyed, for so they thought they should be, if I were, de- if I were deprived of the command over them. But as I did not grant their request, but was taking care of my own safety, the Galileans, out of their dread of the consequence of my departure, that they should then be at the mercy of the robbers, the zealots, John and his people, sent messengers all over the Galilee to inform them of my resolution to leave them. Whereupon, as soon as they heard it, they got together in, the, in great numbers from all parts with their wives and their children. And this, this they did, as it appeared to me, not more out of their affection to me than out of their fear of their own account. For while I stayed with them, they supposed that they should suffer no harm. So they all came to the great plain wherein I lived, the name of which was Asochis. But wonderful it was what a dream I saw that very night. Josephus dreams. <laughs> For when I was betaken myself to my bed, I grieved and disturbed at the news that had been written to me. It seemed to me that a certain person stood by me and said, O oh, Josephus, leave off to afflict your soul and put away all fear, for what now grieves you will render you very considerable and in all respects most happy, for you shall get over not only these difficulties but many others with great success. However, be not cast down, but remember you are to fight with the Romans. So this is his dream. An angel or something came to him and said, don't worry about these people from Jerusalem and John, etc. You know, that's going to be a great victory. You're destined to fight with the Romans. When I had seen this dream, I got up with an intention of going down to the plain. Now, when the whole multitude of Galileans, among them were the women and children, saw me, they threw themselves down on their faces and with tears in their eyes begged me not to leave them exposed to their enemies, nor to go away and permit their country to be injured by them. But when I did not comply with their pleas, they compelled me to take an oath that I would stay with them. They also cast abundance of reproaches. His leaving them, though, is it's not physically just him. He, he has an army of guys. No, he's going home himself. Okay, but, but one with, man cannot but without, back at hordes. But without the, but without, but but he wants, he's going he home to his father's that. request. Later, but without Josephus leading the army, yeah, right. Who will fight? Who will lead the army okay, against so the Jerusalem? Guys that, right. But in the Galilee, these people don't want him to leave. That, that, that's right. When well, okay. he's writing it. So listen but to what happens. Guys, but he's got guys that he leads in. Patience. In, Patience. In, in Galilee? Be patient. Okay. Right. They also can't cast an abundance of reproaches upon the people of Jerusalem, that they would not let their country enjoy peace. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, My peace. Too, right. Pax Josephus. Mm-hmm. Right. Pax Josephus. When I heard this, and I saw what sorrow the people were in, I was moved with compassion for them, and I felt that I should undergo the most manifest hazards for the sake of so great a multitude. And so I let them know I would stay with them. And when I had given order, and then and when I had given that order, five thousand of them should come to me armed with provisions for their maintenance. There's an army of a thousand marching towards him, right? So now he's got his army to go to Jerusalem with. So, so he's saying, okay, you want to be with me so badly? I want 5,000 soldiers well-armed and provisioned right here. 
Mm-hmm. To get 5,000 yeah. guys. You got 5,000 guys. I sent the rest away to their homes, meaning the women and children. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And when those 5,000 were come, I took them together with 3,000 of the soldiers that were with me before, and 80 horsemen, and I marched to the village of Chiboo, situated in the con- confines of the Ptolemies, and there kept my forces together, pretending to get ready to fight Placidus. Placidus is Roman. Right? So we got the picture, right? So he, he's now got 8,000 men. And he right? Protect- armed, provisioned, right? Mm-hmm. Tremendously loyal to him, begging him to lead them, right? His old veterans that have gone through many revolts with great success and very impressed with the brilliance of their leader. 5,000 people from throughout the Galilee, men mm-hmm. who want to give their lives, if necessary, to keep Josephus mm-hmm. in power. <clears throat> he doesn't march against the enemy. 8,000 to 1. To 1,000. Well, it's 8 to think, 1 odds. Right? 8, to, eight one to, one odds. to 1 odds, right? But by the way, they have the authority of Jerusalem, which is very serious, yeah. right? Instead, he goes to a city and seems to prepare to fight the Romans. Mm-hmm. So that's you know, that's smart, because yeah. then if spies knew his real intention, they would report to Jerusalem, <coughs> they get prepared. But now false reports would go out saying he's one of us. Or Disinformation. Or Disinformation. He's Disinformation, not aware right? of what we're playing right? to do, because he's not... <laughs> that's the other part. There's two parts. One is that Josephus doesn't know we're marching on him, right? Because if he is, he would be preparing to fight us. Well, but they no. don't know that he knows but, that they're marching knows. on him. But what yeah. they know is he's preparing to fight the Romans, yeah, which they, means he's not aware of yeah, them. He's not aware of their, right. their intention, right. even though he really so, is aware of their intention. Absolutely. Right. So he's, but he's, he's a disinformation He guy. is, as they used to say in the West, holding his cards close to his vest, in spite of the fact... He's giving them a red In spite of the fact that he's there with 8,000 men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, this is like the best-kept secret in the gallery, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> what his intentions are, right? Okay, so there he is, and he's gone to uh, the village situated in the confines of the Ptolemies, and, and he's preparing to fight with Placidus, who has come uh, with two cohorts of footmen and one troop of horsemen, and was sent there by Cessius Gallus to burn those villages of Galilee that were near the Ptolemies, right? N- near T- Tamales, T- the Ptolemies. A siege camp had been built against Ptolemies, and so I pitched my camp about the distance of 60 furlongs uh, from the village. Remember, a furlong is... Does anybody remember how long a furlong is? 200 meters? 200 meters, right? An eighth of a mile, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, So... said horse racing. That's right. Yeah, like a furlong race. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So So he's about... He's about 15 miles, right? He's about 15 miles from the Romans, right? He's close enough that everybody knows where everybody is, right? And now we frequently brought out our forces as if we would fight, but proceeded no further than skirmishes at a distance. We fired arrows at them, they fired arrows at us, we threw a couple of spears at each other, right? For when Posidus perceived that I was earnest to come to, ba- to a battle, he was afraid and avoided it. Yet did he not remove from the neighborhood of the Thomas. Mm. Right? So he's sitting in one place, I'm sitting in another place. Every now and then we, you know, the ru- finish Roman breakfast, go a, out. A Nobody's cohort, getting killed. A cohort is smaller. Than, it's not Much smaller. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's small, much smaller. Small much smaller. Yeah. But he also has horsemen. Yeah. Right? But he doesn't want to really attack challenge, him. right? Yeah. And obviously, Josephus doesn't want to challenge him because Josephus has a real fight coming up with Jews. It, it's a fake at this point. This. It's just, you know, but anybody who reports is going to report support. Josephus is challenging the Romans. On top of it, right? Remember who's marching towards him. Zealots who are accusing him of being sympathetic to Rome, <laughs> right? And what am I doing? What am I doing while you're, you know, spreading rumors about me? I'm the one who's actually fighting the Romans. Yeah, they're coming to fight Jews while he's preparing to really fight the Romans. Right. (laughs) You got to give him credit, right? He's not a foolish person. T. Barnum. But always keep in mind that we are reading his account. Yeah. yeah, Right. Of course. Okay. But he himself using the word pretend. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> About this time it was that Jonathan and his fellow legates came. They were sent, as we have said already, by Shimon ben Gamaliel and Ananus, the high priest. And Jonathan <clears throat> contrived now how he might catch me by treachery, for he dare not make any attempt upon me openly. So he wrote me the following epistle, letter. Jonathan and those that are with me are sent by the people of Yerushalayim uh, to Josephus. Send a greeting. We are sent by the principal men of Yerushalayim who have heard that John of Gascal has laid many snares for you to rebuke, you to rebuke him and to exhort him to be subject to you hereafter. Right? This is the letter Josephus has received from the leader of the army mm-hmm. of Jerusalem that is marching on him that is actually planning to put John of Gascala as the governor of the Galilee. We got all that? Mm-hmm. Right? And he says, we're here to make John of Gascala, right, obey you. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what the letter says. <clears throat> to rebuke him and exhort him to be subject to you hereafter. We are also desirous to consult with you about our common concerns and what is fit to be done. That implies the Romans. We therefore desire you to come to us quickly and to bring only a few men with you, for this village will not contain a great number of soldiers. Yeah, come come on. on uh, I mean, who do they think they're talking to? An idiot. You know? He's like a master of deception. Yeah, yeah. Josephus. Yeah. And they think he's going to fall into this fall trap. For that. This is the trap he used on John. Uh-huh. Do you remember? Yeah. Right? In two cases. They think right? he's an idiot. He or? invited, the. there was an army coming towards him, and he told his people, let in ten and close the gates. <laughs> Right? And say the rest have to wait outside. And then he cut off people's hands, you know, and he threw, you know, tied their hands around their necks and sent them back. It was very effective. They think he's going to fall for this, right? Thus it was, that's the end of the quote. Thus it was that they wrote as expecting one of these two things. Either I should come without an armed men, and then they should have me wholly in their power, or if I came with a great number, they should judge me to be a public enemy. Mm-hmm. Now, it was a horseman who brought the letter, <clears throat> a man at other times bold, and one who had served in the army under the king. So, he knows the horseman, right? And he knows what about under him? The king and the Agri- Ag- Agrippus, Agrippus, right? So, he knows that they have hired people mm-hmm. who are actually sympathetic to the king, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or at one time certainly were. Right. Mercenaries maybe they did that he, exactly. Maybe he may fear to harm that person, right? Or because he's like. I don't think so. I think what what Yuan has said is that he understands this guy is for sale. Yeah, he can pay them. Right. He is. He was loyal to the king. Now he's loyal to John. Right. Okay. Okay. He can pay them off. Whoever has more money, he (laughs) has the gold. Makes the rule. (laughs) It was in the second hour of the night that he came. So two hours after Hatsos, you know, it could be anywhere from one in the morning to three in the morning probably. It was the second hour of the night that he came when I was feasting with my friends and the leaders of the Galileans. Right? Uh Now I suspect he knew that this messenger was coming. He had advance warning. Right? So he's obviously very comfortable and he's with the leadership of the Galilee and they're all so what is this guy going to be able to take back as a message the Galilee is loyal to him they're all eating together if he lets him go out <laughs> if he lets him out but he, <laughs> but he knows the guy right or his mm-hmm. arms hanging. Yeah. this man upon my servants telling me that a certain horseman of the Jewish nation had come was called in my command but he did not so much as salute me at all, but held out a letter and said, This letter is sent to you by those that are come from Yushalayim. Do you write an answer to it quickly, for I am obliged to return to them very soon. Now my guests could not but wonder at the boldness of this soldier, but I desired him to sit down and dine with me. Mm-hmm. Join the party. Yeah, don't be in Is such a big rush. Thing? 
But when he refused to do so, I held the letter in my hands as I received it and fell into conversation with my guests about other matters. Right? You know, and by the way, how about those Blue Jays? Huh? We thought they were going to do okay, right? But didn't work out, right? Uh, 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 yeah, and the guy is standing there, and he's got the letter, and he's not opening it, right? Because he has to return, so he knows that he has them because that guy can't go back without an answer. That's right. Very good, right? Can't go back without an answer. Exactly. Uh, so I held the letter in my hand and I received it and fell in conversation with my guests about other matters but a few hours afterwards <laughs> I got up a few hours? <laughs> a few hours afterwards I got up crying the walls <laughs> and, when I dis- and when I dismissed the rest to go to their beds the leaders of the Galilee right? you still here? right <laughs> Right? I directed only four of my intimate friends to stay and ordered my servant to get some wine ready. Hmm? Get some wine ready. <laughs> I also opened the letter so that nobody could perceive it. And understanding thereby presently the, the purpose of the writing, I sealed it up again. <laughs> I sealed it up again he kind of knew what it was but now he's confirmed it (laughs) you understand the patience of the man he's got this letter Mm -hmm. and he actually doesn't open it for hours and is holding it in his hand it must drive everybody crazy even his guests even his guests must be driven crazy by this right but he's Mr. Cucumber cool as a cucumber right I opened the letter so that nobody could perceive it, and understanding thereby presently the, the importance of the, the purpose of the writing, I sealed it up again and appeared as if I had not yet read it, but only held it in my hands. <clears throat> I ordered 20 drachmas should be given to the soldier for the charges of his journey. He had a long day with a lot of expenses. Here's 20 gold drachmas. And, and when he took the money <clears throat> and said that, and, and he thanked me for it, <clears throat> I perceived that he loved money <laughs> and, that he was, and that he was to be caught chiefly by that means. Caught? Caught. Caught. In other words, he could be bribed. Right. Uh-huh. right. Yeah, okay. Which is exactly what you suggested. He's a wench. He knows he's a mercenary. Yeah, he's a right? mercenary. Right? Right. He kills okay, for money. He double. Right? <laughs> right? The other guy did. And I said to him, and I said to him, if you will but drink with us, you shall have a drachma for every lachayim you drink. <laughs> for every glass you drink. Like a Russian guy. Mm-hmm. He's a bit Russian. <laughs> and so he gladly embraced this proposal and drank a great deal of wine. <laughs> now, let me just pause for a second here and remind you that wine in ancient times was Strong. not the wine that we drink, right? It was like 60 proof. It was much more like a liqueur. It was very, very thick. Strong. That often what they would do was dilute the wine, right? And the Talmud talks often, and Halacha talks often about diluted and undiluted wine because it was so thick and so strong, right? So he got a drachma for every glass of wine. I'm guessing that it was not diluted. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This proposal, uh, he drank a great deal of wine in order to get more money (laughs) and was so drunk (laughs) that in the last he could not keep the secrets he entrusted with me. But I discovered them without my putting questions to him. Okay, now do you understand what's happened here? This is a very sophisticated thing. He's interrogating him, doesn't know it. No, he knows everything that the yeah. guy knows. Yeah. But he right? wanted to be publicly. Yeah. No. no. He wants to make sure that his source in Jerusalem it's is protected. Yeah. Ah. Right? Yeah. Because this guy. Uh-huh. We'll find out this from He's going to give all the information to him that he already knows. Mm-hmm. So it confirms what he knows also, so that's good. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, his source in Jerusalem has not been revealed. Mm-hmm. If it was known that he was so prepared for this in advance, right, they would have to figure out who was it that, you know, it's ratted on us. It's what? From your this is my conclusion, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, okay. But I... <clears throat> 
Uh, he was so drunk that he could not keep secrets and he, that he was entrusted with. But I discovered them without my putting questions to him. That a treacherous design was contrived against me and that I was doomed to die by those that sent him. When I heard this, I wrote back this answer. Josephus to Jonathan, quote, <laughs> Josephus to Jonathan, and those that are with him, sends greetings <clears throat> upon information that you are come in health into the Galilee, I rejoice. And this especially because I can now resign the care of public affairs here into your hands and return to my native country, meaning Jerusalem, mm -hmm. yeah? which is what I have desired to do for a great while. And I confess I ought only to come to you as far as Zaos. But farther than Zaos. A, a city, yeah. But farther, uh, but farther, and this without your commands. I'm coming to you. Mm -hmm. But I desire you to excuse me, because I cannot do it now, since I watch the motions of the Placidus. Uh -huh. I would really like to come to you. They're busy. Right I'm looking forward to turning over the governorship to you, and I can get back to Jerusalem, which is what I dearly love. But, you know, I'm in the middle of fighting Placidus, mm -hmm. right? I can't abandon my post when you're dealing with the Romans, right? I watch the motions of Placidus, who, uh, who has a mind to go up into the Galilee. And this I do here at Choabo. Do you therefore, on receipt of this epistle, come here to me? Fare you well. Mm -hmm. Josephus. He's Without up. your army, yeah? <laughs> he doesn't say. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say. But right? even if he came with his thousand men, they'd still be defeated yeah. by mm -hmm. a greater army. So you either bet. way You bet. It was he actually right? inviting him to join the battle against Placidus, in a way. In a way. Well, no, by the way, there's no mention here that the soldier said, I've come with a thousand men. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. I'm, taking, I'm bringing a message from distinguished leaders of Jerusalem who are not far away and they're on their way to you. There's been no mention of the thousand armed men I, in I the discussion we've had so far. Him. He's mocking Oh, him. yeah. He's he, mocking who? Josephus is mocking the. Uh, the well, that, well, but they don't know Jonathan. that he's mocking. Well, I think what I. So by the yeah, way, come here, come here. Don't worry about it. But he really, he knows he's not going to give him anything. He, he's, but uh, we're going to hold here. But I would say yes. On one level, he's mocking, but this is a tremendously subtle thing, yeah. right? Because yes, he's saying I'm fighting the Romans, not you, and I know that you have all the best intentions. I want to not be governor. I'm looking forward to turning it over. I'm glad. To, it's just great that you're here because now I can turn over the governorship to you. All those things, right? But he's also, there's like a hidden another level, right? And that is this guy who's come back to you, right? Who, you know, you bought, right? If you question him in detail, you're going to find out I bought him first. I bought him second. I bought what you sold. I bought. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. The guy wouldn't tell. I was just drunk. He'll, he'll say I was waiting for the <laughs> yeah, finish. He's busy. And for the guy, they're, they're, they're probably really, smart, and they're going to interrogate him. He's going to slip up, and they're going to no, know this guy. We can't tell. trust him now. Yeah. No, the guy yeah. wouldn't tell that he told all the secrets. So, well, we don't. We don't know. We're going to find that out next week. He's yeah. not an idiot. We'll find that. They're going to find out from interrogating him why you're so long. He's going to slip up. They're probably smarter no, no, than him. Would, no, he would say what everybody saw. That the Josephus was holding thing in his hand and for two hours talking. He forgot that he's holding the letter. Well, whatever he's going to say, he's also going to report that Josephus has a huge army. Then on the other side, right, are the the troops of John the Zealot. Uh, who Josephus calls the robbers, but who also has the authority of Shimon ben Gamliel. Um, and they are intending to kill him. Mm 